A while ago, I did a video on how you could convert photorealistic images into pixel art seamless textures. This meant you could create pixel art textures for your video games very easily using your real world examples and didn't require you to have to necessarily draw a texture every time and get references. It provided you a really good base and you could also just sort of sketch out ideas and then get them converted into pixel art and get pretty decent results. However, the issue was is that it wasn't very intuitive and it required the heavy use of the command line, aka the terminal or CMD, which are not many people are actually familiar to unless you're someone who is actively a video game developer, and any artist would have struggled to use it that may have wanted to. There was also a kind of a lot of uncertainty as the software needed, while did say on their website could run on all platforms, there was such as image magic and the scripts were uncertain if they would the results would be the same on every platform and I hadn't actually tested it because I don't have those systems to test it on. Jump forward to today and I've made my own piece of software slash tool that solves those issues. One that is cross-platform and the one that is way more intuitive than the previous method so a far more wider range of people can use it without having to struggle. It also has way more features and is not as limited as the previous method. So Pixel Texture Forge, the Python based machine learning kind of tool that is used to create seamless textures or just convert your images into pixel art textures and does some other fancy things. In fact, let's just show you straight away and here it is. It's a lovely little web server that you can just act through, access through your local host. So I've moved my head out the way just so you can see both the input and the pixel output image much better but let's just go through all the tools and see how they work and what you can do with them for now. So with the convert image to pixel art you can choose the number of colours and how big the pixel size is. It will then tell you to scale image down, scale image down resolution so currently this is just the same resolution but if we're scaling down to in this case 120 by 128 this is what it's representing just an upscaled. And as you can see here, you can scale down the image to that desired resolution. Now, why is there choose colors? Because the method I am using is a machine learning technique called K means clustering. I'm essentially getting the colors of the image and clustering them into a certain amount of groups. So, in this case, the original, in this case, 16 colors. So, I have 16 of the average colors and use into the image to assign each pixel. And that's how it gives us these kind of pretty decent results. Now, the pixel size, obviously, I'm representing eight pixels of the original image counts for the new one pixel so you can kind of do the math if this is a 1024 by 1024 image divide that by 8 you get 128 by 128 so that is important to note your input image helps if it's in the in the value of base 2 so that is your 64 uh, 128 256 512 then 124 those will be divided down into the correct resolutions for your games that are commonly used 32 16 by 16 you get it so if I wanted to go down to 64 by 64, that's obviously just double eight, which will be 64 by 64, run it, and there you go, our result is more pixelated. Now if I want to scale this image down, I use, use output as input, and now I have my pixel image as my input, and I can actually then get it down to the correct resolution properly. Maybe you didn't like the input image, or you had a good input image, but you didn't like the color of it. But I've added it so you can also shift the color and apply a color palette to provide some variation. Maybe you have a nice brick texture that you want, and you want a different set of colors, like blue, red, green, for example. So one of the things you can do is just simply change the value. So if you want to increase the red of the whole image, then you can do that. So if I run that, the image output will become significantly more red, as you see here. It's now like a bright red. But if you want to spice things up a little bit more, you can apply a color palette. So let's say I want it to be kind of maybe a blue color. I can select this or one, and in this case, let's apply a color, a factor of one. That's a you know, 100% increase it. Uh, it's going to be quite intense. So we'll use the color palette monochrome. And there you go, completely change the image to a, a possible watercolor texture. And there are different color palettes to choose from. And that's because I am using a publicly open source API. And that API is the color API. This is completely in the public domain. It's like you bet anyone's able to use it and you can just try it out on their website. And you can see here we have this blue one. We can give it the different color schemes that are available. So monochrome, uh, monochrome dark, etc. That is available on the pixel texture board. So here they are as well. So if you try analog it, it'll give us this weird blue color. What about compliments? We have a brown color and the triad. So we give us a purple. So we get some very interesting results. And um, like I said, we can change the intensity to 0.5, so about half. This will be less intense. 
And there you go. Look at that. That kind of looks like a snowy like mountain effect we have here. And so when we have these results, again, use input as output, go to our pixel image, and then we can scale it down to our 64 by 64. And there we have it. We have just a really nice looking rocky snow texture now. And maybe you, once you have your desired results, uh, you like this texture, it's like, hey, I want to use this in my video game. Well, then you can create yourself a lovely little Wang tile set, uh, which is a method you can use for auto tiling. So you can see here, now we have it for all possible iterations of your video game. There are other tile sets, so there is a much bigger one where it's like 48 combinations. This is not implemented, this is just one of the simple tile sets. Uh, whether I'll implement that or not, I don't know because that's actually quite complex to do programmatically. More of a prototype thing, but that is you, you can generate borders for your tiles. This is the one thing that is sort of mainly missing. So what is the border? So that's like edges of the tile set. So when I run this, there we go. Here's just a flat color, only the average color I've got now. And I do have an option for a brick and you can change the border size, but the brick you see, yeah, it just says kind of a grid, but the grid's not really lined. So this is still early development um, at the moment. Another upcoming feature is procedural textures. I do have one. Uh, there is a, you can generate a texture with a color palette, but the, you can see here, the results are, the, the, there's not much you can change the frequency. So if I want to make it look more grainy, I can increase that, but uh, eventually there will be such things like brick textures, sand textures, wave textures, that are all seamless so if you can use. So this is, is a noise texture that is in fact seamless. So you can use it for create seamless textures. And I have added the color palette, so analogs will change it. And the results should hopefully change. There we go. Uh, so there, there is that, and there will be more textures options available. So you can just procedurally generate rather than just use your images. Uh, that means you can create a lot of variation very quickly. And the last feature is the one where you can convert your image into a seamless texture as well. So this is a picture I took of a bit of rust on some piece of metal I have, and it's currently not seamless, and we're going to make it convert it into a seamless and there are a few options you can pick a part of an image as and then use that as a seamless so if you have a very very large image and you want to find what the best area to, to create a seamless texture on, it will do that you give it the tile height and width or you can just give it the whole image so if we give it the whole image here we go we now have a seamless version of our image now this is a very naive method so all we're really doing is you're using the image to texture package which essentially takes one half part of the image and just blends it with the other half and you get a little bit of a merging. And so something like Rust where it's very randomized, stochastic, the results are pretty novel. And then when we do put it through our pixelizer, like so, you see the results are, aren't, aren't that bad. They're, they're pretty good. It's a bit, little bit, so let's just get it up. There you go. So the, the results are actually quite decent. If you use something that's very structured and pan, the results are kind of terrible. So here I have this image that you can see has a already a clear pattern to it. It isn't in fact an already seamless texture, but let's say I was going to put, put it through the seamlessness or I'm going to choose a part of it, say so 500 by 500. If I run, you'll notice it has this weird blurring effect you see here in order to try and make it look seamless, a part of the image. And this is the, when you already have something, an image that already has a, a bit of a pattern to it, it just does not come out very well uh, when you then try and make it seamless using this blending method. Uh, it's just not great. If I do put it through the pixelizer, you know, it still doesn't really provide us with great results. Maybe if, if it's scaled up, it kind of hides it a bit, but you can see a bit of the jankiness and you'd have to manually edit it. So now that I showed you all the features, I'm gonna show you how you can install it. There are two methods that you can install it. One is to use Python and install the dependencies yourself and kind of like build it yourself. And the second is the recommended one, which is using Docker. Now both of these methods should actually be able to run on both platform on all your platforms. The uncertain one is with Python trying to install dependencies, there can be issues with driver issues or libraries not available in your platform, which is why I recommend Docker, which does run on all platforms and therefore should just run fine out of the box. So if you're gonna use a native version, then use Python. Uh, you can download, you should be able to download the latest version, I think, but it does run on Python 3.11, but because we're using pipenv, then you should just be able to L, uh, do a pip install of pipn and then pipn should install the right version for you when you do when it does come to creating virtual environments so this way is still really method easy just first of all git clone the project or you can go to the releases and just download the zip file of it which just contains the latest version of pixel texture forge and you just want to seed into it so let me just do that actually in fact let me first copy git clone let's do this git clone that 
open up your terminal or if you are doing it this way and this will then copy it into your thing once you're in the directory you then just want to install pipm which is just as seen on the website pipm install pipm release it easy i already have it installed so i don't need to and all you do is then run pip and then install again and this will then create your virtual environment for this application uh, this might take a while depending on how fast the system is there you go so it shouldn't take too long it's not too many dependencies once it's ready you then just do pip and shell so that means you enter the virtual environment there we go we then go into the source directory and then you just do python app.py to run it in development mode you just go to URL your local host 5000 and that will open pixel texture forge now the second method is the probably the more ideal one unless you're looking to edit and develop it a bit more is to instead use unicorn which is a which runs it in production and gives it a certain amount of workers as well so you just want to copy this url and then you just paste it in and this will essentially give you the same results but in this time it, you won't get the warning this is a development server it runs on multiple workers and if you really wanted to, you can in fact also change this configuration file. So change the timeout, change how many works on it, and even change the binding of the ports. So what about the recommended install, which is the using the Docker? Well, Docker is easy. Uh, just install it on your system. And it should also come with Docker Compose here. We go on it in overview and on how to install it. Where is it? Here it should already come with it it comes with docker desktop specifically uh, but i think if you're on linux you have to install it on, on top of it if i remember at least i've had to before so once you do have that installed and then just do this exact same thing either download the zip or just get clone the repository go into the directory then just do docker compose build so i'll do it here docker compose build and depending again on how fast your system this could take a while to build but it's quite a small project so it shouldn't take too long but it's finished it took about one minute for me for it to build and then all you do is do docker compose up and that launch it and you get the exact same results go on that url and there you go you have it again and that's really it and that's it that's is how you use and install the software only other thing I can say is that this is under MIT license. That means it's publicly available for anyone to use and anyone to modify. And I am open to contributions. If you do want to have any additions and you know the program, you can submit a pull request. I'll look at it and review it and we can add it in. Other things, I have a roadmap of things I do want to add. So obviously one is then the procedural textures, uh, improve the Wang Tao borders, add some optimization like multi-threading and some more Docker file arguments. So you can change the port in case you've got that or 5,000 used but really this is it and if you do use it and you make your textures then do come and check out how to create and render a seamless tile set for your game this uses wang tiles perfect place to then learn how you can implement it in your own game so that'll be it and i'll see you in more videos